Hey everyone and welcome back. It has been quite a while since I've put up a video. I think Sturgis was the last videos that I put up. We have been incredibly busy uh, building engines and doing machine work and all that stuff. You can see some cases up here and some heads, all this kind of stuff. Uh, for all you guys that have got bikes in here, we've been running wide open to get those bikes done now that we've got quite a few parts coming in. Still waiting on a bunch of parts for different stuff. It's a crazy world we live in these days, but it is what it is. Nonetheless, customers come first. So uh, through all of these processes, I have been videoing it, and uh, when uh, things slow down a little bit and I can find the time, I'll certainly edit those videos and get them up on the channel. Finding the time to edit has been uh, the biggest problem. But anyway, so I decided over the weekend to go back through uh, all of my archives. There's a ton of videos that I've taken that for whatever reason I, I never released those videos. So this is going to be the first video of me diving into some archives uh, of footage that I've taken before and then I'm, I'm piecing them together very quickly and I'm actually going to add this to a new uh, a, a playlist and I'm going to call that playlist the archives. So this is going to be the first video in the archives and what we're going to be covering today is sizing a combustion chamber. Now you'll have to you'll have to be patient because the the camera that I used uh, to do a lot of these wasn't as good as this camera that I have here now and I also didn't have some of the audio equipment. So the video quality itself is not going to be up to the standard that you guys are used to and the audio is clear but uh, it's not going to be again as, as good as what you've uh, become used to over time. So I ask for your patience in that regardless the information is good. So in this video the first of the new archives uh, playlist it, we will be sizing a combustion chamber. You'll see how we size it, check the volume and then put it on the lathe, size that down and then I'm going to show you a couple of very interesting things about the deck on the heads as it relates to twin cam and M8s. So if you're an M8 owner you'll want to continue watching this as well. So guys let's start the archives. This is a graduated cylinder right here with 100 cc's of fluid in it. All right, so what I've done here is you'll be able to see the head. Um, there we go. So I've just got the valves in it, and I've got a spark plug in it, and I've got a compression release in it. That was one other thing that you guys missed is me machining these for the compression release. So uh, there's a little hole for it, and I'll show you the flip side of the head. Let's get her done. So I've already dropped the valves in it, and I've done just a just a visual. As you guys can see, there are no springs on these valves. I'm going to show you exactly how good exactly how good our valve seats are. So there's no springs. So what we're doing here is we are checking the volume of the chamber after all the machine work is done. Yes, we did bigger valves but we also sunk them further into the chamber to have the proper valve to valve clearance uh, for the cam that we're running, for the TTC lift of the cam. And then of course the chamber grew as well with us polishing it. So for this particular build, I know what my compression ratio needs to be. I know the dome volume of the piston, the volume of the valve release in the piston. I know what head gasket I want to run. I also know, uh, what I want my quench to be, piston to head. That is a very important number to prevent auto ignition. Remember we had talked about the four different things that uh, that can sound like detonation, but only one of them has something to do with ignition timing. So basically I've greased up around the deck surface. Here's a clear plate so I can see the liquid inside. Uh, the grease is just to form a seal for the liquid. Because it's red and I can see that I've got a good seal on the chamber there and that's the reason I like to use it. So again, we've got 100 cc's on the chamber, or excuse me, 100 cc's in our graduated cylinder. And we're going to drop this down and then fill this up and see how much, what our volume is. And the other thing, like I said, this is a very good demonstration to show how good our valve seats are. You can see we're pouring liquid straight in. We're dry as a bone. And we're going to be moving the camera around a bit because after I size this, then we're going to walk over to the lathe and uh, show you how we do this on the lathe. 
All right, so a, a factory head. So to give you guys some idea of where we are at, a factory head comes in, give or take, at about 85 cc's on most year model twin cams. So after all the machine work that we did, we now have a volume of 89 cc's. So uh, I do a little bit of math to determine how much we need to cut off of this deck to get to the cc volume that I want to be at. So what I'm gonna do here, see we're just full of fluid so you guys can see, all right? And again here, we're at 89 cc's, so that's the volume of that. All right, one of the first steps, you'll see this plate right here. I actually made this. This is one inch thick solid steel. You'll notice the multiple holes that are in it. Uh, I drilled those out for the different head patterns. So with this one piece of tooling here, I can bolt up a twin cam Evo Sportster shovel head. You would be surprised how many uh, heads that I put up here, uh, stock ones, uncut, that are uh, uh, out, you know, by several thousands from flat. All right, again, this is a half a thousandths indicator. I barely have any needle movement. That's probably one to two tenths of a thousandth. This will control this lever in combination, this lever in combination with this one, and this one is what will determine the speed of the spindle. All right, then here it's basically direction of the spindle. Each one of these other levers are essentially a transmission. The different combinations of all that will determine all of this. And I know it's backwards, I think, sorry about that. But uh, this is a machine lathe, so it will do threading, metric thread, pipe thread. I can actually do taper on it as well with a fixture. But then also down here, this will tell you, which relates to the settings on the different levers, this will tell you what your feed is, whether you're traversing along the x-axis or traversing in and out with the cutter on the y-axis. So that's what that chart tells you. Then you set it up accordingly. And then, of course, as you're machining, uh, there are certain speed and feed rates for different types of materials, uh, how you're cutting, the amount that you're cutting. So a lot of this is... Uh, you know, experience, trial and error, but there is a bit of a standard to it as well. All right, we're going to be removing 24 thousandths. 24 thousandths. So we're going to do it in two passes. I'm going to do a... 24, I'm going to do a 14, 14 thou pass and then a 10 thou pass. Finish looks like. Alright, I'll give you guys a little closer up. Now, I want to show you another interesting thing. This problem started back in 2007. I'll take my glasses off started back in 2007 this area right here the head all right 07 wasn't that bad you'll see how this little area right there where it looks like it's almost polished it looks like there's a hole but it's actually not a hole now who's who on here has an m8 so for m8 folks anyway where i'm getting at if you look at this particular area right here now when you get into 2008 and you get into 2009 cylinder heads and later in the twin cam this area right here, when you machine it, has a little bit of a kidney shape to it. It's a different color. You can actually take your thumbnail and indent it. So it's, you know, that's pretty much the center of the head where, you know, most of the mass of it is. For 07 and, or 06 really, and back, you didn't have that as much. If we were machining an 09 head or 10, we would see this little kidney shape here. Now, one of the issues with the M8s is chunks actually falling out here and of course you know you have like oil ports or coolant port uh where the gasket seals it off but on the m8 heads especially 17 and 18 models we had quite a few heads where a chunk would just fall out of this area 
forcing us to then have to go back in and weld that area up and then you know machine it all back off but that is the finish that we're we're looking for one other thing i'll show you guys if if we had been machining a 2006 or earlier head as we were cutting it you would get typical curls you know coming off again showing a very dense casting material but what you tend to get with the later model heads is more of this less curls and you get more of a a powder now when you start getting into really in real new heads 14s 15s you start getting into this type of stuff so the next step of the process the head will come off the lathe it'll get cleaned up entirely parts washed dry overnight all that type of stuff of course i still have the other head to do uh and then i'll you know once i clean it up i will go back and check it uh, the, this volume again to make sure we got it right and uh, once that's done then we do final assembly on the head on this m8 head here it's the problem is this area right here all right and what can happen it, it's extremely thin right there and the castings aren't all that great so when you start decking this surface a little bit that's where that chunk right there can fall out all right and notice here it's you know you've got your oil passages right there uh, so it's just a, it's a tough part of the casting. So that's, that's the problematic area. And you'll notice on these as well, see where that square is right here. So that's, you know, where your, your head gasket uh, has a, a metal shim in this area right here to try to keep that sealed up. Well, that also in this area right here is the area where you're seeing a lot of the M8s with a gasket slipping. If you look right there, there's small clues. See where the carbon? dips out guys using an impact see where the carbon dips out right there so i believe what we're seeing is that head gasket starting to squeeze into this one right there and get something down in there but look you can see the smear being pulled yeah see right there i think it's kind of obvious in certain light guys have an awesome weekend take care of yourselves and each other y'all have a good one see you